This project is called Tic-Tac-Toe. The goal of this is to create a Tic-Tac-Toe game that shows up down in the console window down below. And you enter in which move you want to make using letters and numbers. So I've started with a basic class here. And I'm going to go ahead and start into this. The name of my class is called Tic-Tac-Toe. So I'm going to create a new Tic-Tac-Toe in the main method. You have to do that every time or else nothing will run because it always starts at main. All right, so here I should actually create a constructor for this. The name of this method is exactly the same as the class name. So since I've named this tic-tac-toe, the constructor will also be named tic-tac-toe. It has to be public and you want to have open and close parentheses for most of your default constructors. It turns out we can do other things in here later on, but we're going to start with that. Some other things I should think about. I'm going to use a two-dimensional array to keep track of my x's and o's. So I'm going to create an int array, two dimensions. That's why there's two sets of square brackets here. I'm going to call this grid. And to start with, I'm actually going to set up its size. So new int 3, 3. So now I've got one dimension is 3, and the other dimension is 3. All right, so other things I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and create a buffered reader. I'm going to need that in a moment. Um, name it br, and it's going to be a new buffered reader, inside of which is going to be a new input stream reader, inside which will be system.in. That's how I read from the console window. It's complaining because I haven't imported either of these two. I could actually manually type import and then the names of these things. Fortunately, Eclipse is smart enough that I can just hover my mouse over it and say, hey, import that. It's like, all right, I'll do that. And I'm like, hey, import that. There we go. So I could manually type these two lines in. Another thing I could do is just say, notice that both of these are java.io. Instead of having them individually, I could just say import java.io.star and then I don't need the second one. And it'll import everything from Java I.O. All right, so let's see. What else do I need? I need a string for reading things in. I'm going to start that as just a, the empty character. That's not a blank. That's a string with nothing in it. All right, so that's a start. So to begin with, let's go ahead and read in one line from the input. Now, it turns out when you try to read in from buffered reader, there's a possibility it'll throw an error. So I'm going to go ahead and immediately do a try catch block for this. Java's very paranoid about errors, so it makes you actually try and catch any exceptions you might have. I'm going to catch all of the exceptions that might occur. So I'm going to use this capital E exception. That's the parent of all possible errors that you might have. And I'm going to name whatever error I have EX. So I'm going to take that error and just print it out, which is print stack trace. Notice the capital S and the capital T there. So let's try and read in one line. So input equals br dot read line, capital L on read line. And then for now, I'm just going to do a system out just to make sure this is all working, because I've typed a number of lines of code here. And you want to try and make sure that you test uh, pretty frequently. So that if you type 16 to 20 lines of code, one of those lines of code might throw an error. If you've, and it's hard to tell which one it might be. If you only typed one line of code and then test it, it's easier to figure out what's going on. So the shortcut is sys out, control space, and I'm going to print out input. So let's go ahead and run this. This is going to be a Java application. Hi. There you go. So that terminated because the red square isn't sitting there. And it just printed out what I just said. For now, I should probably start looking at how large the input is. So my goal is to have A, B, or C be the first letter of my input, have one, two, or three be the second part of my input. If I have 
more than two characters in my input, or fewer than two, that means that my input is incorrect. So I'm going to say if input dot, let's see, it's not size, it's length, there it is, is not equal to two, that means something went wrong. And I should probably tell the user, hey, use a letter and a number. So enter a letter followed by a number. There we go. Next, I should check to see if the first letter is A, B, or C. So that's where I'm going to use the char at method. So input dot char at, capital A on that. And if I check the 0 1, that should be an A or a B or a C. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as with single quoted A's. So this is a char, not a string, which means I'm allowed to use two equal signs. You can only use primitive types with the two equal signs. So if that thing is true, or input dot char at 0 is a B, or, so those two, uh, two vertical bars are ors. In the lab, it's the key just above the enter key. Input dot char at 0 equals a C. So I want to say if that whole thing is false, so if the first character is not an A or a B or a C, that means something went horribly wrong. And I should not allow them to proceed. This is a pretty long line, so I'm going to go ahead and put it across multiple lines here. Notice that this is why we have to use semicolons and braces, because Java will allow, allow you to put enters wherever you please. So I'm going to say if, put a parenthesis there. So this whole thing now is within parentheses. So if that whole thing is false, that one matches back here. Notice it actually highlights. I'm going to say first character must be an A, B, or C. Here, I would do another else if using uh, the letter, or the first character, the one character, I guess I should say, the char at one, and make sure that it's a one, two, or three, the, that particular character. Well, so let's go ahead and say that in this comment here. I'll leave that for you to do. Finally, if we get done with all that, hey, we must have good input. So now we have to take those things that we had and change them into rows and columns. 